All right. Shalom Rastafari. Ne Ras Yadinos Tefari name. Now we're going to look up Orion or Orion in the Bible. Now this is from the last um, sabbatical teaching and feeding, reading and feeding from the 29th. And so we're going to go to Amos 5 and 2. So let's bring up the verse so one can see the context of why we feel this particular update is important. This is on interpreting ancient um, mythology, some may call it. I say ancient signs. I think what is really wrong with this end times, this end of this cycle, it's not that we don't, we have the evidence, we have the information, we live in an information superhighway, but there is a false interpretation or a misinterpretation. Most of us have a Gentile, white, Western misinterpretation. So we have the evidence, in other words, the fact, the knowledge, the science is there, but there's a misinterpretation of the evidence. So we're going to look at ancient interpretation. I'm going to give you this example. We're going to touch on this example. And this was on I and I mind. I said, let me just do a little vid that can point this particular matter out. And if one can overstand that, it would help. It will help in so many other ways. Now, this is Amos 5 and 8 here. It says, Seek him that maketh the seven stars and Orion, or Orion, and turneth the shadow of death into the morning, and maketh the day dark with, uh, with night, that calleth for the waters of the sea, and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. Now, you can see this is, this is with the Strong's reference, so you can go to each of these particular words. And here in the Hebrew, it's called uh, uh, kisil, kisil or kisil, right? Kisil or kisil. Now, here they have a definition. This is according to the Strong's Concordance, which is basically um, a good contextual um, reference point. In other words, we're not saying that every one of the Strong's definitions is right and exact, but it puts it in the proper context for, for true um, brothers and sisters and those who are seeking to, to study the Bible or God's Word and really get to know it. In other words, in the society of His Majesty and Line of Judah and among Ionized Rastafari, we say to one's Study the Bible like you would study Shakespeare. If you was into um, theater, 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 and you know how folks would study Shakespeare. You got to study Shakespeare in the context of the time and so forth and so on. So there's a lot that you have to learn, even though you may know Shakespeare by heart. In other words, the verse, the lines, the prose, the sonnets. There. In order for you to bring, make that word living, you have to understand the context of the particular time. And then you can interpret it like update Shakespeare for modern times. So I use the Shakespeare example for us in our Bible, our Rastafari and um, Ethiopian Hebrew Bible study. So here, notice this right here. It says any, it says any notable constellation, specifically it says Orion or Orion, as if a burly one. I don't know if you can see that. Um, let's try to bring this over for the camera, right, and go to Orion right here. And you can see as a, it says, as a burly one. It's the same as the H3684. So this is the 36, the Hebrew 3685, right? And that's Amos 5 and Eight. So let's bring up them hard grade right here. Go to Amot, Amot 5 and 8. We once read or heard it, I think we both read it and heard it, that salvation is a matter of perspective. Salvation. You know, a salvation is a matter of perspective, for example. Um, the Word of God, the teaching of His Majesty, the testimony of Christ is salvation. But if you don't have that per perspective, then it doesn't, if you don't receive it, if you don't Kabbalah, if you don't Kabbalah it, then it is not for you. 
So salvation is a matter of perspective. All right, matter of perspective. And this is on perspective and on interpreting ancient ancient signs. So the Bible here says in Amos uh, 5 and 8, it says, Sabatun kawakubitina orion yetabalawin kokeb yefetarawin yefetarawin ye motinatla water negat. Yemiya laut a win. Kenunim bele lit yemiya chella ma win. Ye bahirunim wuhoch tarto. Be midder feet lie yemiya fesses such a win. The Targum is seek him that maketh the seven stars and orient, and turneth the shadow of death into the morning, and maketh the day dark with night, that calleth for the waters of the sea, and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord, Yahweh, Yod, Hey, Wow, Hey, it says right here, is his name. Now, when I look at them Amharic, it, it's, a, it's a little bit different there. That's actually more pushed down to this verse. So let's just connect this since, since there's a, a, a colon here. It said that strengtheneth the spoiled against the strong, so that the spoiled shall come against the fortress. So in other words, that strengthening, strengtheneth the down press in the sense of spoil, not bratty type spoiled, but the, those who are down pressed, the so called oppressed against the strong, so that the spoiled or the down pressed shall come against the fortress. Ambawum in the first, in the first, Bertulai, ye didn't get, didn't get, ye met awin. Felgu Samu Egaziabiherno. So that connects the whole idea of verse one and verse two, right? Together. Right now, here's what we brought up as far as the visuals on this. And we thought about this and we said, This is interesting. Well, we was doing one of the recent um uh teachings. Let's begin off with um let's begin off right here with ancient Egypt for a moment, right? Ancient Egypt. And let's open this up, right? Ancient Egypt. So here, let's uh, move some of this. This is from the last, the former teaching that we was doing right here, the scapegoat uh, from the Torah portion. So let's bring this up right here, all right? Let's get a little larger of this. Now, this is this is the Nile River. You know, so now this is the Nile River right here. Let me point to this. this is the Nile River, right? And this is the Milky Way. So this is above right here, and this is below right here. This is the three pyramids, the, the Giza or the Agazi Plateau, and this is the this is Orion's Belt, right? These are the stars. Now, of course, here they connected these particular sort of dots, but some some um. Some allege that there's a connection between um, as above in the heavens and what is reflected below, right? Okay, now that, that, being, that being said, let's move some of this out the way so we can bring up a comparison on this. So some of this we can actually, we can actually, we'll pass the scapegoat, you know what I'm saying? We'll pass the scapegoat right there. Uh huh. All right. So now let's get back to the other visual right there. All right. So that's that's one one demonstration of Orient. But if you actually were to just look at the stars, in other words, look at that particular. Because it says, "Seek the Bible is telling us to seek Him that 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 um maketh the let's get the verse let's get the verse right here. Seek Him that maketh the seven stars and Orient." 
So there are seven stars in Orion. It says, seek this one. So let's bring this up as a comparison right here. All right. And let's large and large in this. All right. And let's adjust, adjust the colors right there a little bit so you can see this a little bit better. Okay. Let's get the reflection back there. All right. All right, so you can see it a little more Denmark. All right, they, there we go. All right, so you see this right here? You see this in Frank? So these are the stars, right? And we can count these stars, so forth and so on, right? But this is the constellation known as Orion. Now, usually, Orion is pictured as a hunter. You know, that's, that's why when we looked at the definition from Strong's, to bring up Strong's again, Right here, the H thirty six eighty five. It says Kusil or Kisa, right? Uh, Kusil, Kusil, or Kusil, Kusil, right? Any notable constellation. So, at the time that the Strong's and 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 the Macelsons and Hand Strong's Greek and Hebrew dictionary had been compiled, they didn't really clearly. They don't say that they clearly understood the significance. They knew that. The seven stars in Orion is a constellation, but they say any notable constellation. It's not any notable. It's a, it's a specific constellation. Then the second one says specifically Orion, and then it says as if a burly one. Right? So in King James Version, sometimes when you see constellation, it is speaking about Orion. Sometimes what you'll see Orion and it's speaking about Orion. So what it's telling us that in the Bible, sometimes we find constellation translated in King James Version, but it's specifically speaking of this particular constellation. Now notice how this is connected with some of the chief themes in the scripture, such as it says, and turneth the shadow of death, it sounds like the 23rd Psalm, right? Into the morning, and maketh the day dark with night, that calleth for the waters of the sea, poureth them out. There's also um, that, that pouring out, and we can see an Aquarian kind of, um, speaking of the, the Aquarian age in the sense, that the idea of, 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 pouring out. The water's pouring out in the book of Joel. Um, the, he will pour out his spirit upon the sons and the daughters. And then also, um, there's a pouring out of wrath as, as well, right? But now, we're, we're showing you this to say, okay, it's a matter of interpretation, right? It's a matter of interpretation. So, when we go to ancient Egypt, first and foremost, this might be the best picture right here. The best demonstration to show you um, um, or, or, or Orion skies, which is known as Orion skies, right here. And these are the, these are how the stars have been how the stars have been named, right? Let me have to make it a little. Can you see it full right there? Okay, yeah. These are the stars right here. There's the Bel to Gase, Bel to Gase. There's Bellatrix. Then there are these three stars. And remember how that links over here with um, with ancient Egypt. There are those three stars, right? Those three stars. Um, um, there's Mintaka, there's Al Nilam, there's Al Nitak. Then there's Saifia, and then there's there's Rigel or Rigel. There's Rigel here, right? Now this is basically the star pattern. Now some connect the dots. You know, they connect the dots, almost like an hourglass in a sense but they call this Orion's Belt because they picture Orion now when we start to look at some of the constellations. Um, say, look at this Orion, the coming one, such as the witness of the stars. Here's how Orion is pictured there. You can see now they've taken that star pattern, right, the star pattern, and connecting the dots. He said this is his belt right here, and they picture him as raising up raising up his arm, right? Raising up his arm and having a club in his hand. So when you look at a more detailed picture of um Orion, you can see some of the particulars. Right? Remember it's a matter of interpretation. Now this is more or less 
a latter and an eastern and a, and, and a far eastern interpretation of it. What do I mean by that? That the Egyptians also envisioned Orion as well, but not in quite the same way that, say, the, the Babylonians and coming all the way down to modern Babylon pictures it as that, that so-called hunter. When we look at the position of the stars more in full, we'll see something of this sort of setup right here. Let's zoom it in, right? When we, when we see the stars more in full, we're going to see something to, to this extent. You see, you see right here? So you can see how they, they basically saw these stars, as we showed you, just a star. They connected these dots, you understand? And they, and they assumed, well, perhaps his leg is lifted up here. And perhaps they say, well, this is his belt. No, this, this is his belt right here. So some picture him a little different. This is a latter-day European, Greek, Greco-Roman picturing of it. You understand perversion, according to Dr. E.W. Bullinger. He said the Greeks perverted a lot of Dendera and the ancient Egyptians, and therefore that perversion also perver perverts our understanding of the, the witness in the stars and God's prophecy and God's glory in the stars. That's why we keep speaking about that particular, um, Ms. Gunner, that particular, that particular document. So let's show you just a couple more of these and then, then make our, what we think our main point. So when you look at the stars just by themselves, right, you're going to see something of this effect. If you just look at that particular region, right, look at that particular region in the sky. Let's see, bring it out to about 150 or so, right? You're going to see something of that particular, of that particular sort of, um, of that particular sort of effect right there. You see, All right? So that's what you'll see. Seeking he, him who maketh the seven stars in Orion, and this is how they picture it. You understand? According to a Western Gentile, right? The Western Gentile. Um, misinterpretation of it, right, as this hunter. Now, if we go a little bit further back, as, as far as in time, what's interesting is that the Egyptians, the Hebrews, and the Afro-Shemites pictured it one way, and the Babylonians and the Far Easterners and the Westerners and the Greeks and the Romans pictured it another way. This is what we find to be very, very interesting. So how these ancient signs are interpreted. This is another, another look of it. So you can clearly see the shape is taking shape right here. It's taking shape as some sort of somebody carrying a bow or something like that. Or as in the other um, more westernized picture, someone carrying a club right, somebody carrying a club. But that was not the original designation or the, or the original interpretation, should we say, of this particular um, system that plays a prominent role in the Bible and in connection with Yahweh, in connection with the true God of Israel and the God and Father, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, we're going to prove that by now bringing into demonstration or as an exhibit, we're going to bring the ancient Egyptian interpretation. And then we're just going to dove it simply here and hopefully go into some more details later on. Now, here's how the, here's how the ancient Egyptians pictured this particular um, system right here. Now, let's, let's notice all the stars being named, the connection, once again, the connection, the Milky Way, the Nile River, you understand, the, 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 the three pyramids, the child, the mother, the father, or the father, the mother, and the child. And this is according to um, the Orion Mystery right here by Boval on page 134. Some Europeans who have it more right than some of their their predecessors, all right? Now, you can see right here that, that Orion is not pictured as a hunter from the Egyptian perspective, the ancient Egyptian perspective. This is the Sa 
of Egypt or the prince of Egypt or the son. This is the son that was called out of Egypt where the Bible says, I've called my son out of Egypt. This is the Sa, the, the Sara, the Sare, the one born of Sara or the, the son of God, right? Now, notice, but notice how he's pictured here. He's not pictured as the hunter slaying an animal. You understand? You notice he's not pictured like this particular picture over here as a hunter slaying an animal. But he's actually pictured, if we can bring his hand a little bit more into focus over there. He's carrying a staff, right? He's carrying a staff. He has a star in his hand. He's, he's actually pictured as a sower, as a sower sowing the seed. Now, that would make perfect sense with this particular scripture in Amos 5 and 8. Because in Amos 5 and 8 it says, Seek him that maketh the seven stars, often called the seven sisters, the whole idea about the seven churches, and, and Orion, you understand, and Orion, which we now see the true Orion from the Egyptian and the Hebraic and the Afro-Shemitic perspective is the Soa, not the so-called hunter as, as most of us probably know or have been um, um, familiarized with Orion, because here's the key. And turn of what? The shadow of death. The Lord is my what? Shepherd. I shall not want. He making me the light on green pasture. leaves me the sides of what? You understand? The still waters. And then even if we walk through the valley of the shadow of what? The shadow of death. He turneth the shadow of death into the morning. Right? And maketh the day dark with night, and calleth the waters of, this, of the sea. Now notice the connection of this with the Nile River Valley. You understand? Because of the inundation. The connection with the inundation of the Nile River Valley. I think there's one more picture I think that would really, that had came to mind in our earlier study of this, that we want to also put as a, as, as, as a demonstration of this basic point. Now, you probably know there's some of the other pictures that we showed of Namrud or Nimrod, the hunt, and so forth and so on. Now, this is also from ancient Egypt as well. Let's bring this up. Right? It's kind of small here, but let us um, enlarge in a little bit. Right? And you can see this right here, which is from Dendera. I believe this is, this is in Dendera. This is a, a pixelated view of it. You can see Orion right here. Now, now compare if you would. Compare if you would. You see the arm. You see this arm lifted up. You see this arm lifted up. Now, here he has this arm lifted up too. But actually, the significant stars would show that the arm is actually in a different, in a different direction, a different orientation, more according to this view. As we see right here, the view of the Soa, the view of the shepherd. So the Egyptian, the true Egyptian um, interpretation, this is what the Israelites preserved out of Egypt, the pure and the primordial faith that we have even today within the, the, the information, the knowledge of it, but the interpretation has been... Um, how can we say it has been biased, it has been biased by false Western white misinterpretation. So here is another picture of Orion from the Egyptian view, which is not as the hunter, but notice, is, is as the shepherd. And you can see once again, you know, Belt to Gaze, Bellatrix, the, the stars of the Orion belt, um, 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 Saif, and, 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 and Rigel or Rigel right here, which link and meet up with these pyramids. Now you say, well, what about the pyramids? The Lord doesn't say anything about the pyramids in the Bible. If you believe that, read Isaiah chapter 19 and verse 19. 19, 19. All right? More to come, my brothers and sisters. Remember, Salvation is a matter of perspective, perception, and getting the right interpretation so that one can set about on the right course of action. 
Shalom Ras Tafari.